بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم نحمده ونصلي ونسلي على رسول الكريم أما بعد رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل العقدة من لسان يفقى قولي اللهم انفعنا بما علمتنا وعلمنا ما ينفعنا وزدنا علما إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل وسلم وبارك على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين أما بعد <coughs> My dear respected brothers, my elders, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh Wa alaikum wa salam wa rahmatullahi In last week's speech we had the ability to discuss the three rights of the Qur'an One was to recite the actual, to recite the actual Qur'an The hadith Nabi Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam مَنْشَنَ الْإِقْرَأُ الْقُرْآنِ فَإِنَّهُ يَأْتِي يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ شَفِيعًا لِأَصْحَابِهِ مَنْ قَرَأَ حَرْفًا مِنْ كِتَابِ اللَّهِ Read the Qur'an for rarely it will intercede for its sahib, the person who acts upon the rights of the Qur'an. And he mentioned that person who reads one harf, one letter from the Qur'an, he will be given ten rewards. Then Nabi Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told him to explain Alif la mim is not one word, meaning the whole combined. Rather, alif un harfun, wala mun harfun, wa mim un harfun. That alif is a letter itself, la is a letter itself, and mim is a letter itself. This was regarding the recitation of the Quran. The second right of the Quran is to understand and act upon. Some people cast about as two. And the third right of the Quran is to preach the knowledge of the Qur'an, to spread the knowledge, spread the teaching of the Qur'an. The verse of the Qur'an, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَاَعْتَصِمُوا بِحَبْلِ اللَّهِ جَمِيعًا Hold fast to the habl and the rope of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And what is that rope? In a hadith, Nabi Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam explains, أَلَا وَإِنِّي ذَارِكُمْ فِيكُمْ ثَقَلَيْنِ That verily I am leaving you with two great things. Ahaduhuma kitabullah ya azza wa jal, hu hablullah in hu hablullah. Mantabiahu kana ala al huda, wa mantarakahu kana ala dalala. Subhanallah. I'm leaving you the kitabullah, which is the rope of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The person who follows this Quran, he is upon guidance. Wa mantarakahu kana ala dalala. The person who leaves the, the guidance of the Qur'an, the person who leaves this Qur'an, who leaves the rights of the Qur'an, reading, trying to understand, acting with one, and preaching the, and teaching the Qur'an, this person is misguided. We emphasized last week upon the recitation of the Qur'an. In another, in another hadith, Nabi Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he addresses the Sahaba and he says to them, أَيُّكُمْ يُحِبُّ أَنْ يَغْدُوَ إِلَىٰ بَطْحَانِ Which of you would like to go to the neighboring boroughs or the neighboring land? Bathan wal Atiq is a places, name of places. And he would get two healthy camels which have great value. And while attaining these camels, he doesn't disobey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or he doesn't put his kinship in some sort of jeopardy. And they said, yes, who would want this? So camels, red camels, nowadays are like the Ferraris and the hypercars and the supercars. Meaning the value of that is great. Just the way the value of these supercars and these hypercars have great value, they go up to 2 million, 3 million pounds. So Nabi Kareem said, Allah is telling the Sahaba, who would want to go to a neighboring, uh, neighboring bara, neighboring land, and attain these camels which have great value? Then Nabi Kareem said, Allah is telling he mentions that that person who goes to the masjid 
وَرْزِدُوا فَيَتَعَلَّمَ آيَتَيْنِ مِنْ كِتَابِ اللَّهِ He seeks knowledge of two ayahs, two verses of the Qur'an. خَيْرًا لَهُ مِنْ نَاقَتَيْنِ It is better for him than two camels. If he learns three ayahs, it is better than three camels. If he learns four ayahs, it is better than four camels. And Nabi Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he says, as much numbers, as much ayat he learns, it's even better for him. So one ayah, two ayahs, three ayahs, a person, if he wants to, he can't spare up time and learn the meaning of these ayahs, learn the actual, try to learn the verses of my heart. And a point comes to my mind, many students of the ilm or many students that are learning the Quran, or even generally, what happens when we are young, we learn Surah Yaseen, Surah Rahman, maybe Surah Kahaf, Surah Taha, Surah Sajda. To become a hafiz of the Quran is not far. To become, to learn the whole Quran of Bahat or to learn any portion of the Quran is not compulsory. But what is compulsory, once you learn those ayahs, to forget those ayahs, a person will be questioned upon this. وَمَنْ أَعْرَضَ عَنْ ذِكْرِي فَإِنَّ لَهُ مَعِيْتَةً ضَنْكَ وَنَحْسُرُهُ يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ أَعْمَى قَالَ رَبِّ لِمَا حَسَرْتَنِي أَعْمَى وَقَدْ كُنْتُ بَصِيرًا قَالَ كَذَلِكَ أَتَتْكُ آيَاتَنَا فَنَسِيتَهَا وَكَذَلِكَ الْيَوْمَ تُنْسَى سبحان الله A person, may Allah save us all, he will be resurrected in the hay after as a blind person. He will say, Ya Allah, why have you resurrected me? وَقَدْ كُنْتُ أَعْمَى وَقَدْ كُنْتُ بَصِيرًا And before this I could see, I had vision. Allah will say that this is the same way we gave our ayat to you. And you forgot these ayahs. You forgot these verses. And this is your hashat that you will be without vision. You will be blind. The ulama have mentioned to learn the Quran is not compulsory. But after learning it, we have to keep this to memory. And it doesn't just refer to the it doesn't just refer to the half of the Quran, the first the land of the Quran. It applies to any surah that we learn. If you learn Surah Yasin, we should try to endeavor, we should endeavor to read it daily. We learn Surah Kahaf, Surah Yasin, Surah Dukhan. It, it is our responsibility to keep these, to keep these verses in our hearts. And we should not think it's a burden. Oh, no, I need to learn my Surah Yasin again. I need to learn my Surah Rahman again. No. The Big Rim Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam mentions that the person who has no Quran in his heart, can bait his kharib, is like a house which has been left alone and it has been left to, to be with no one living in the house. When a person, he has a house, he refurbishes a house, he puts furniture in the house, he puts nice lights, carpets. A person wants to go in the house. Nowadays, on YouTube and TikTok, there's these people going around taking videos of people that live in mansions. So, you know, people that are watching this, they want to see, okay, what is that mansion? How many rooms does that mansion have? So a person, when he sees something, a good house, when he sees a mansion, when he sees a villa, he wants to, he has this, this thought that, what is in that house? I want to be in the house. But when a person sees, when he's driving or when he's walking past, he sees a house which is no one living inside, it's rusty, it's got dirt everywhere. We end up calling this is the haunted house. No one wants to even look at the house. We get scared when we pass through the house, we try to run. We run past the house. Same way as a person beautifies his heart, with the verses of the Quran, with the verses of the Quran, he learns the Rahman, learns the Yaseen, keeps the memory, then inshallah, nothing can harm him. Once, when we were studying our teacher, he was known to, um, um, my teacher, he would, um, people, used to, he would people used to go to him about Athar and Jinn, you know, when they were affected, and etc. Um, and he would, he would say to us, a person that learns the Quran, a person that continually 
tries to permit the Quran memory, nothing can affect him. No jinn, no other can affect him. So these are many benefits of learning the Quran. These are benefits of keeping ourselves attached to the Quran. We look at one malfug or one saying of Abdullah bin Abi Ubay. Abdullah bin Abi Ufa, sorry. He says that so he was asked by Talha bin Musraf. He said that what did what did what wasiya did Nabi Kareem sallallahu alaihi wasallam give? The wasiya in Arabic is that it has the meaning of a very strong will, and wasiya means that will, that advice that has great emphasis and great importance. And that's why it is referred to the wasiyah when a person is passing away his, his will. Because that will, that advice is given has much importance. That, listen, when I die, when I pass away, this is mine, uh, this is my debt, this is so-and-so, this is so-and-so. So it becomes a will, but in the actual root of the word, it means a very strong and important advice. So he's saying, what was saying, what strong advice in the Bikrim Sallallahu Alaihi leave for us? What did he say? He gave strong advice. He gave us the advice to hold firm to the Kitab, to the Quran al Kareem. We look at the saying of Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu. He mentioned, Inna Allah from Nabi Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He said, Nabi Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, Inna Allah yarfa'u bihaad al Kitab aqwama wa yada'u bihi akhareen. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because of this Quran, he elevates the stages of some people, of people. And the same kitab, the same book, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will defame. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will lower people as well. What does it mean? Those people, إِذَا عَمُلُوا بِهِ وَحَفِذُوا حُرُوفَهُ وَحُدُودَهُ The people that Allah will elevate are those people who learn the Quran, who try to permit them Quran's memory, and number three, the act upon the hudud and the act upon the Quran al-Kareem. So this was pertaining to last week. Um, we didn't have time to uh, finish it off. The month of Ramadan is flying past. And on, I believe, Saturday, Asr time, the last 10 days will start. Asr al-Awakhid min Ramadan, the last 10 days will start. These last 10 days, they are roughly mainly two things which a person or we should look out for. One is the i'tikaf. In the beginning, Sallallahu Alaihi he placed much emphasis on the i'tikaf. I'tikaf means Luzumu Baytillahi fi ta'atillah to stay in the heart of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala only if you can seek the pleasure of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. As Aisha, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala be pleased with her, she says that Nabi Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam will stay in Ramadan, will stay in I'tikaf, hatta tawafa Allah tabarak wa ta'ala, and it was his yearly routine, yearly habit, until the year that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala took him away, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, until the year he passed away. And every single year, this was the... the... Habit of Nabi Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The second thing which has great importance is Laylatul Qadr. And we look at the hadith of Aisha, Aisha, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala be pleased by she says, كان إذا دخل العشر إذا دخل العشر أحيا الليل وأيقظ أهله وشد مئزره وجد so when the last 10 days used to enter, what was the state, what was the condition of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? Number one, Ahya layla he would stay up at night. And not only himself, وَأَيْقَضَ الْأَهْلَهُ He wake up his family members to come. Ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Number three, وَشَدَّ مِئْزَرَهُ He would tie his waist bag or you can say belt, and he will strive, push himself. 
The first one is quite easy to understand. He would stay up the night. Number two, he would wake up his family to also participate in the ibadah. Number three, was Zarahu, he used to tie his waistband. What does that mean? He has two meaning. One meaning is that when a person he gets ready for work, if I told one of you that there are five covered boxes or heavy equipment on that side, we need you to please move it to the other room. What do we start doing? We start folding our clothes, we get ready, we put our jeans up, we may, we may do some, some, some sort of warm ups. So we get ready to pick up the equipment. So it was the expression that Nabi Karim said a lot, who would get ready for the 10 days. And number two is Washadda Mi Zarahu. He would tie his waist, but meaning he never used to open it. So that's referring to what a person does uh, um, in um, an aspect of his life. So he never used to go close to any of his wife in the last 10 days. Just to show its importance. And Wajadda, and he used to strive more. In the first 20 days, he used to strive, he used to push himself. When the last days came, he would strive even more. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has revealed Surah Surah Al Qadr. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Inna anzalna hu fi laylatul qadr, wa ma adaraka ma laylatul qadr, laylatul qadr khayrun min alfi shahr. Tanazzalul malaikatu wa ruhu fiha, bi idni rabbihim min kulli amrin salam, fi hatta matla'i al fajr. What do we learn from this surah? Number one, this surah is better than a thousand nights, uh, a, a thousand months. Khayrun min alf shahr. Now, if you take that into years, that's roughly 83 years. My respected teacher, Sheikh Muhammad Salim, Hafizullah, he mentions that if a person on the last 10 days of Ramadan, he spends one pound every night, he will get the reward of spending one pound for 83 years, subhanAllah. If a person prays two rakat nafat, voluntary prayer, in the last two nights of Ramadan, he will get the reward of praying two nafat for 83 years, and so on. If a person gives 10 pounds, if a person gives 20 pounds, if a person does so and so thing, he will get the reward, and it is related to Qadr on the night, he will get the reward of spending or giving or doing that certain, certain thing for the last 10 nights, uh, for, for 83 years of his life. SubhanAllah. So we should try to, now, nowadays, these, um, there these apps and websites where you you give a certain amount, for example, a tampon, and after Maghrib on the area, they will give the your, your, your money, or how, how much ever, in the example, a pound a night, they will give it to whichever charity you want. But sometimes we forget, we want two days we give, secondly we might forget, that's another thing. And many people, which is not wrong, many people, we give abroad, we give, you know, to our home country, which is not wrong. A person should give to wherever he can. But many of us, we forget our local communities. We forget our local masajid, we forget our local madaris, places of in, because that's the way our background homes have the madaris over there, have expense, uh, maintenance, they have to pay for the bills, wages. Our, our masajid, our local masjids, our madaris as well, they need support as well. They need to take care of maintenance, they need to pay for bills. So we should give, no one is saying we shouldn't give back home, we shouldn't give where we're going, but we should not forget what are them, so we should not forget our local communities as well and local masajid. <coughs> Just finishing off, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says that this Layla, this, this uh, night, is a night full of barakah. Inna anzalnahu fi laylatul mubarakah. We have revealed this Quran in the month, uh, in this night, in a night which is full of blessings. Nabi Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam mentions Man saama ramadana ihta... Uh, man saama ramadana iman wa ahtisaba ghufira lahu ma taqaddaba min zambih wa man qama laylatul qadri iman wa ahtisaba 
غفر له ما تقدم من ذنبه. Two things here. The first is he will fast in the month of Ramadan with iman, believing in Allah and having hope and getting reward from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will expiate and forgive all his sins, his previous sins. And when it comes to Laylatul Qadr, the same reward. The person who stays awake in Laylatul Qadr, meaning he worships Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through the Quran, through Tasbih, through, through Salah, through charity, the same reward. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, with the condition of, of having Iman, believing in Allah, and number two, having hope of reward from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, غُفِرَ لَهُ مَا تُقَدَّمَ مِنْ ذَنْبِهِ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will expiate and forgive his previous sins. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us the ability to take grasp of the last 10 days. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us all with the last 10 days of Laylat al-Qadr. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala keep us away from sin, ma'asiyah, ghafla, and what, what should we read when, uh, when a person finds Laylat al-Qadr? Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha, she asked Nabi Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, if I do find them this night of, uh, of um, Laylat al-Qadr, what should I read? Nabi Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, Quli Allahumma innaka afuwan tuhibbu la afwa fa'afu anni. Oh Allah, you are the one that forgives. Ya, ya Allah, you are now forgiven. Ya Allah, forgive me. Allahumma innaka afuwan tuhibbu la afwa fa'afu anni. Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdaka nashadu illa illa illa. استغفر الله تبارك وتعالى